Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're talking about the scale of the Milky Way, our galaxy. We're going to try to figure out how big or how small the Milky Way is in human terms. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. So for this video, I decided to use Google Earth, an amazing incredible tool that has been updated over the years to look absolutely and totally incredible. But before we do this, let's actually do just a little bit of scaling here. Let's determine and establish what our scale is going to be, just so we can understand how tremendously large Milky Way actually is. Now to make this scale work, we're actually going to make an assumption that one single meter is going to be equivalent to about a thousand astronomical units, or basically one millimeter, which I'm about to show you in more visual terms, is one astronomical unit. So in other words, if this right here is our sun, then Earth is exactly one millimeter away from it. So this is our Earth, and the distance between them right here, this distance right here is a minuscule one millimeter, which actually is tremendously, tremendously small. It's only about yay big. Just to give you another comparison, let's place Mars about a millimeter and a half away. Then about uh, another millimeter and a half away is going to be Mars. And uh, about something like half a centimeter or basically five millimeters away is going to be our friend Jupiter. So this is around here. Here. Now, this is actually not to scale yet. I'm just trying to make this a little bit bigger. If you were to uh, make this to scale, here's actually a human finger that shows you how big one centimeter is approximately. Now, we are here at only five millimeters, which is basically half this distance. And this is the distance from the sun to Jupiter. So this is our new scale. And if we were to go about three centimeters away from the sun, basically three of these fingers, we would find our very cold friend Neptune, that's the last planet in our solar system at a distance of just over 30 astronomical units. So this is about three fingers, maybe finger and a half in, in diameter. So this is kind of our scale right now. Now imagine if we were to try to compare the rest of the galaxy using the scale, and this is exactly what we're going to do. Now let's use uh, Google Earth. We're going to go and find some really cool location you may have never seen before. So how about the infamous Gundam from Tokyo, or the, the famous life-sized Gundam statue located in Odaibo in Tokyo? This is actually one of the coolest things you might see in your life, if you, especially if you're a big fan of the show. And there's that statue, you can see it, it's actually very large, it's about 20 meters high. And here what I wanted to do is kind of use this as the scale of things to come. So we're going to actually go and use this street view to first uh, zoom into this area, and there, there is the statue right there, and just kind of give you an idea of where we are at right now. Now, um, we're going to maybe zoom in on one of these bricks, just to kind of establish the scale again. The three centimeters of distance between the Sun and Neptune was about this much. This is this is basically the distance to Neptune. The distance to the Sun, uh, oh, sorry, the distance from Earth to the Sun is not even visible. It's only one millimeter. It's basically this one line here. The thickness of this one line is probably about one millimeter. And if you were to go to a distance of about uh, one meter, which is the size of this pole right here, this is the speculative distance from the sun to uh, planet nine. We think planet nine is located somewhere in this region. Uh, one person here is about uh, maybe a meter and a half like this kid right here, or maybe about two meters at the tallest. The statue is about 20 meters. Now, even at this distance, we still haven't really reached much. We're still kind of technically in our own solar system. As a matter of fact, if this was the sun on the bottom, if this was the sun right here, then the top of this Gundam statue would basically be the Oort cloud where we have our comets orbiting around our, our solar system. So that's not really that, uh, not that close at all. So let's go back into this 3D view because it's actually really awesome that you're able to explore things in three dimensions uh, using Google Earth and pretty much everything here is kind of three dimensional. It almost looks like some sort of a um, SimCity or uh, City Skyline simulator. Now, all right, we're going to go to the nearest star from our solar system. 
Um, and we're going to assume that Gundam here is the sun. So basically right here, his feet are the sun. How far would the closest star Proxima Centauri be? Well, you would actually have to take a walk and you have to walk for about 250-ish meters. So from here to around the area right here. So basically from the statue up to maybe the building here or up to about the end of the parking lot here, this is the distance from our sun to the closest star Proxima Centauri. Now, just to zoom in again, there's the little cars right there. And you actually are basically walking really slowly for 260 meters and you're walking toward our sun. Now, just to give you an idea, a speed of light at this point is so slow that uh, a single millimeter, a single millimeter, which is basically not even visible on the scale, but just to go back to the picture I drew earlier, a single millimeter, this, this part right here, would actually take about eight minutes to travel. We're talking about 260 meters here, and this would actually take about 4.2 years to travel from here to here for um, light or any type of um, information. And so that's, that's pretty bad so far. Now, what about things like TRAPPIST-1? What if you want to go to TRAPPIST-1 from our sun, which is right there? That's about a distance of two kilometers. And so here we are going from the statue all the way through this park. We're going all the way here to the end of this beautiful area, possibly even further to the sport, wherever this is. And this is about 2.6 kilometers right here, actually, maybe even to the end of this whole thing. So that's how far TRAPPIST-1 would be from our um, solar system. Even if you were to walk this distance, it would probably take you about half an hour, maybe 40 minutes. And uh, imagine how long it would take the light to travel. If the light travels one millimeter in eight minutes, this would take about 30-ish years. So that so far doesn't sound too bad because these are uh, scales that we can still kind of imagine. But now let's go a little bit further. First of all, let's actually go to uh, the central black hole in the middle of our galaxy, Sagittarius A star. So now we might as well just leave this. We're gonna actually leave Tokyo. And by the way, exploring Tokyo and some of the other major cities in Google Earth is super cool. Look at that. All of these buildings look so incredible. Absolutely incredible. They did a really good job with this. But anyway, so we're going to be leaving Tokyo and we're going to be going possibly to a different country. So here, at this point, from Tokyo, we're going to take an airplane and fly all the way to the country where I reside, to South Korea. And here, even if we actually go to Seoul, the distance is still only about 1100 kilometers. We have to even go further. We have to go to China. So now we are reached China. And unfortunately, Google Earth doesn't really work there. Uh, but this, this distance, is approximately 1600 kilometers, which in our scale right now would represent the uh, central black hole. Now, just to zoom in again, remember, we're still dealing with millimeter being one astronomical unit or the distance from Earth to the sun. Now, unfortunately, you don't really see much here because uh, the Chinese government prohibits people from using Google Earth or something like that. I don't really know the details anyway. So this right here from Tokyo to Yantai was about the distance from the sun to the central black hole. And this is about 26,000 light years. So 26,000 years for light to reach that black hole. And so despite this being the distance from our own uh, solar system to the central uh, black hole, you may have guessed by now where I'm going with this. The actual size of the Milky Way, the size of our own galaxy, is the size of our planet Earth. So in our scale that we use, in this scale right here, where one millimeter is the distance from Earth uh, to the sun, and one centimeter is about 10 astronomical units, and three centimeters is distance from the sun to Neptune, 
in this scale, the entire Earth represents the Milky Way. So as you can imagine, going from a place like New York, New York to a place like Tokyo might take you about 15 hours by plane. But for light to travel um, that much would be hundreds of, or at least uh, almost a hundred thousand uh, years. And so here, from Tokyo to, let's say, a location somewhere on the other side, which is basically half the galaxy, so somewhere right here, it would take the light about 100,000 years to travel. And just to zoom in again and to show you the scale, uh, if this is the galaxy, this is the Milky Way, we're going to zoom in back to Tokyo just to see how small and insignificant our uh, beautiful solar system is in comparison to everything else. So here, let's just zoom in, try to find that park again. I think it's somewhere, so somewhere right there. And right in the middle of this park, somewhere in this area, there is that Gundam figure. And this is not even the solar system. The sun is a tiny, tiny, tiny pixel under the foot of this Gundam. And the distance from sun to Earth is not even visible in this scale. This is how tiny it is. Three centimeters would be the, the distance of Sun to Neptune. And as you zoom out, you realize how tiny we are in this galaxy. Because we, it kind of disappears pretty quickly. And there is the rest of the galaxy represented by our planet Earth. So anyway, that's all I wanted to talk in this video. And hopefully now you kind of grasp the idea of how big one galaxy is. Imagine how big the universe is. Hopefully now this makes sense and you learned something from this video. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe. Share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos and wants to learn more through various simulations. And come back tomorrow to learn something else and maybe even support this channel Patreon to help me grow even more. Check out the new Google Earth. It allows you to travel pretty much everywhere in the world and it's all in three dimensions and it looks absolutely beautiful. So even if you go to North America, you can choose a random city and go and explore at your leisure because a lot of these cities look absolutely stunning in three dimensions. And you even get to see the buildings as they would be created uh, in three dimensions by Google Earth itself. Anyway, I'll see you guys later. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.